Hi. Hi. Welcome my political show. Elmo Kavindu Gunaratna Political Times. Before start the show, I want to hit the like button and subscribe to my show. Now let's get started, people. Now, as you all know, the United States at this proximate timeline is a little mixed bag when it comes to foreign relations. But unlike the Trump era, it's not a chaos that can't be solved. It can be solved. It's just it's chaotic. So let's start with the newest uh, turbulent strike in foreign diplomacy within few nations. The United Kingdom and the United States agreed on a security pact with Australia to give them nuclear-powered submarines. Now, now you think this is a very normal diplomatic, more, more, for, more for diplomatic process. A country like the US and the UK are joining in to give a to give nuclear-powered submarines to Australia to counter the threat from China, uh, the threat from China, who are is it was it was who is extremely becoming boisterous and very very arrogant and completely unsecure for the world at this point. But the problem is, sadly, is there has been there has a slight niggle in the deal. You see, the French, you see, the Australian Defence, uh, the Defence Department also had a trade deal. I uh, also had a arms deal with the French government. So the French government was going to give them diesel powered submarines. So you can probably guess why the guess why Australia chose to have nuclear powered submarines rather than diesel powered submarines, which is a very obvious reason why. But of course the, the French are now pissed. They are saying that they have been backstabbed in the back. This is the problem. I don't think the French government knows what the backstabbing definition truly means at this point. If you really think about this, because backstabbing is this is not backstabbing. It's just not. And of course, that's what it is. It's not backstabbing. So so far, President Joe Biden is is very much standing by his decision as expected to be, uh, obviously as expected. So you might say now. It's wrong to do that right around. That's up to you. I want I want in the comment section to tell me how do you think about that. So yes. So moving on from that issue, uh, today President Joe Biden is about to give uh, inaugural uh, his first ever speech as the President of the United States in the UN. He will look to cover issues such as as climate change and foreign diplomacy, Afghanistan, and issues like that. He's giving a speech in a time when he's practically at war. He's practically under siege diplomatically at the moment. So for Joe Biden, this is going to be the biggest challenge yet. Can he give the proper presidential speech and convince, it, convince the allies of the United States that the United States are back in the world of foreign diplomacy? But the United States is back. The question is, can Joe Biden convince them? This is my fact. When it comes for foreign diplomacy, there is a, there is two sides of a coin. Sometimes the United States have to look out for their own interests. In the case, China is an interest of the United States at this proximate moment. Chinese government's uh, arrogance and their boisterousness and their overregulations on people's lives, things like that, and their dangerous uh, tendency of hacking, uh, hacking accusations that China's are getting, the Chinese are getting at this point. The Chinese are a threat because the world is seeing another Soviet Union on the rise. That's what China is for me. Another Soviet Union up front. That's what it is. There's no question about that. It's the Soviet Union on the modern day terms. So the question is, what can the United States do to encounter the Chinese threat? They can bring their allies together to counter China in the world of trade, foreign policy and especially in the Red Sea, especially the islands in Indo-Pacific islands where Chinese policies are increasingly uh, against the rules of the UN and as a result the Chinese are now a threat even in terms of national security in Asia. Asia unfortunately is also in threat so that's why the United States is focused on China at this point. That's why they are focused on that. That's the simple, simple reason at the moment. So yes, this will be an issue and I hope President Joe Biden can convince
convince its allies that the United States are back in foreign diplomacy, but they are looking out for their own issues and their interests as well as supporting its allies. I hope the, the allies understand that. I hope the allies understand that significantly. So also, what about climate change? Now, for Joe Biden, can he convince the world that the United States are taking the right decision, the, the right decisions and the stances against climate change? Can the US do it? Absolutely. Under Joe Biden, I have no question the United States could be the leader of climate change. But I must confess, at this current moment of time, China is the leader of climate change and the United States will have to overtake China whether we like it or not. So moving on from climate change, China to all those things, let's get down to Canadian politics, my homeland. Now in my homeland, voting is easier than the United States, it's very, very easy. People don't have to wait too long to vote. In fact, voting is a very soothing act in Canada. But in Canada, Justin Trudeau has once again called for a snap election. Now, for some people, an election right now in Canada is absolutely unnecessary. In a time where there's a pandemic, there's economic crisis going around, there are issues in Canada that they are to be dealt with. So the question is, is this election even worth? Can Justin Trudeau win the election? The answer is yes, Justin Trudeau will most likely remain Prime Minister. That, that's not going to change. I can guarantee a victory for Justin Trudeau. But will his party have the same political power? Will he have the same power, lack of power that he had as the beginning of his administration? The answer is yes. There are too many parties in Canada. So as a result, I would expect smaller parties to, to take in whatever the power that Justin Trudeau's party had. So I'm expecting a very close result in Canada, obviously. I'm expecting a very close result in Canada. So from, from Canada, let's get to Germany. Who will replace Angela Merkel in Germany, the German council, Angela Merkel? Who will replace, I hope, who replaces, Ang who replaces Angela Merkel should be just like her, who welcome refugees and things like that. I do not hope someone from the right to be in power in Germany because we know what happens when someone in the right is in power in Germany. We know it, we've seen it, we know what that happens. Anti-refugees, anti-immigrants, those politicians should not be in power. That's a reality. And I do hope the German people understand what refugees, immigrants have given to Germany and to the world. And I do hope if people understand that, and I do hope people vote on that base as well. So moving on from that, let's talk about the situation in the United Kingdom, approximately at this time. In the United Kingdom. In the UK at this proximate timeline, as you know, Boris Johnson had to change his cabinet again. Boris Johnson is more of a troublemaker than a than an 18-year-old, than an alcoholic teenager at this point. He has to change his cabinet many times. There are scandals in his cabinet. There are issues within the British economy. After Brexit, there are issues. These issues are all because of a simple fact. Why would you leave the EU? Why would you leave the EU? It's a simple thing really, the British really just, that the people who voted for Brexit was lied and deceived by the people who wanted to leave. The people who wanted to stay knew the truth significantly. Staying was the answer but not leaving. Negotiate with the EU on the terms you want. That's a reality. So I do hope Boris Johnson gets stability. Boris Johnson should get stability of course. Moving on from Boris, let's talk about Meghan Markle, Meghan and Harry. The two royals who are no long doing the main duties who are getting mocked by certain people. I really want to make jokes. I, 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 I want to be clear about the British royal family for a second here. The British royal family is much of a Hollywood dreamy lifestyle as, as, Meghan, as Meghan is. The royals in, uh, royals in the UK are living a lifestyle for the TV. That's what they are living. Everything they do is a media show. So same as the same as Meghan or Harry right now. So I don't find either parties up, uh, sad for them. But I do accept this. The British royal family has no empathy 
they have no emotions they have no care towards another human being and that's a very much proven fact that's why prince charles is the most hated royal in the uk that's why this, this is why it's the case the queen doesn't have an idea what's going around her because the queen is more interested of being a queen and william is more interested of being the next king of england rather than doing that so you have to understand what's going around while megan and harry in the united states wants freedom so the question is what is the answer what's the fine balance why can't the royal the british royal family be like any modern day political family a normal political family where modernism and old schoolism is accepted equally because this is what i think some modern things of megan might not be accepted by the royals but i don't think megan accept many things what the royals does i don't think that either so i think the british royal family have to reconsider who they are at this point because this is not the 20th century just because you clear your hands after the death of princess diana that's not technically mean it's easy for you because you can blame the media you can blame the bbc re re reporter bashar for the interview that princess diana gave and sue him but let's be one thing clear the things she said in the interview was more damning enough that whatever he had to say to get that from her is surely worth it because if i'm right everything is fair in war these things like fair things that bashar has done to get the interview is fair just like in war just like in war love and everything is fair in love and war and honesty it matters to get the truth you have to do what it takes and i hope piers morgan don't become a smirk because piers you are really asshole you really are piers so don't start smiling like a geek piers just under just understand that piers significantly so on this note thank you very much for joining me on this show thank you very much